Hey addicts, welcome back. We're here for another manga review. This time we're gonna be looking at Cells at Work Volume 2. I'm sorry, Cells at Work Code Black Volume 2. Uh, unfortunately, Michael can't be here, uh, so it's just gonna be me. Don't know when uh, Michael will be back. He's got something else going on. Uh, he's gonna be out of town, so I'm gonna be picking up the slack while he's gone. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna hear and talk about this. Um, there's not a whole lot to say, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail about uh, all of the story beats, um, but I will say that uh, this collection, um, in the first volume, I was like, okay, they've had some pretty good collection of, you know, getting across their more mature theme on, you know, some very, uh, I guess you could say, more severe takes on, you know, what could happen to your body, and so I was like, man, they've hit all the big ones, what, what else are they going to pull? Um, and in this one, I think they found some ones that I wasn't expecting uh, that were still good, um, but I don't know if they were as good as the first volume. Uh, but there's still, I would say, uh, some pretty big stuff, especially in the last two chapters, I believe. It's, you know, a matter of life and death, as a matter of fact. Um, which, uh, by the way, I'm just going to tell you the chapter name, so, uh, or, you know, tell them what they're focusing on. Uh, so you have them focusing on uh, things like athlete's foot, uh, stomach ulcers, uh, gout, <laughs> um, the uh, cardiac arrest, and also, like, buildup of, you know, blocking your... Um, Oh man, I'm gonna blocking all your valves uh, if I'm not completely butchering that. Uh, so, um, you know, I would say some of the standouts in here are definitely like the gout because I think that's something that is just so it, it's I don't want to say it's rare because uh, people can't get that, but I guess it's more uncommon, you know, for even people to get to that sense because you know we got medicine and stuff like that. But it can be very severe if you let it go. Um, left unchecked. So that one's definitely stand out to me and uh, also the the heart and the cardiac arrest stuff. Um, I think that's another good addition to uh, this series. Um, now it does set up, uh, we get more of a focus of red blood cells. So, uh, you know, it's basically just the body taking its toll on, you know, red blood cell and what all he has to do and how there doesn't seem like there's any hope. Uh, so we do get some things that lead red blood cell to be kind of like on a on a suicide watch or he's just like, you know, like, man, what's the point to even working if it's just gonna end up like this? Um, so that leaves some for some good, uh, you know, material to work around with. It really is hard to have dynamics to stuff like that. I guess it just, it really depends on your perspective on how you see this. Do you look at it as, you know, a, you know, do you look at it more from a scientific lens? I'm like, yes, these are parts of the body, you know, this is what they're going for. Or do you look at it more of like, you know, if all of them were sentient and they could have a choice? Because I don't know if necessarily, um, I don't know, maybe I'm overanalyzing it, but you know, it's just kind of like one of those things that uh, it's a cool approach and definitely, I think, you know, a natural thing that, you know, something with uh, sentience would think about if they were in these circumstances. But at the same time, it's like, you know, where is this going? Like, how is this, you know, going to be important? Um, so it is quite interesting from that perspective of just, you know, you know, seeing how don uh, downtrodden people can get and how despair uh, it can be in those circumstances, but knowing that like if you don't do your work, I mean it really is going to be the end um, And they bring up some good like I said some good things that kind of you know build out as calamities to the body um, The one thing I did like a lot in this volume that we got more of uh, That we necessarily didn't get in the first volume or not a lot of it I don't think um, is the interaction between white blood cell and red blood cell and I think their relationship uh, gets a little bit more I don't want to say development but you know it's just leading into that um, you know where you can kind of know that they're getting more connected on you know either talking to one another because in the first volume I don't feel like they really talked that much and in this one I think they have more of a moment to talk to each other so you kind of you know it, it gives them an opportunity to kind of say some things on their mind or whatever um, again not really like you know a romance could happen in the body anyway but you know it's like for the characters that uh, or are, what do they call the personifications of stuff um, go uh, on that aspect, I think they did a better job of, you know, 
illustrating that for some characters that you do care about. Um, and maybe uh, my previous statement of Red Blood Cell, maybe that's just because I don't find him as interesting. But I think in this volume, he's definitely more interesting just because of how much more not range, just, you know, the stuff that he's going through and, you know, seeing his journey from at the start and where he is versus at the end. Um, speaking of the end, I don't want to give too much away because obviously, you know, what's the point of reading a book if you already know, like, the ending? Um, but I am curious to see where the direction goes uh, for the next volume or the next like four or five volumes. I don't know. I should have looked up. I was actually going to look up before I recorded this video. So um, if anybody does know uh, by the off chance, please let me know because I'm really suspect on if this may be just like a short like mini series or if it's, you know, if it's got a set number or if the author is just going to try to go as long as they can with this series um, because... I feel like at the end, it really does, um, it, 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 give, it paints a picture in a way that maybe could be a detriment to the entire identity of this spinoff. So um, if that's the case, you know, I'll, I'll give a spoiler warning uh, here in a, a couple of seconds. Um, I'm sorry, uh, like a minute or so uh, to talk more in depth about that uh, if you want to know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so I'm just curious about where it's going to go and how long this series is going to run because if they're going, you know, back and forth, um, I don't really know how interesting it'll be because I know that at least from what I've seen of the original series too, it doesn't really jump back and forth between different bodies. It's the same body and, you know, what it, uh, you know, obviously comes in contact with or, you know, has to deal with. Uh, so unless, you know, because I feel like in this series, you wouldn't really necessarily want to jump to different bodies either because you're going to lose the development that you've made with the cells in this particular body. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to get my rating real quick before I talk about uh, that spoiler talk at the end. Um, so for this one, um, this one is worth it too. Uh, I think both of them, you know, while they do have uh, different uh, elements that are kind of touched on between the two. Uh, they're in the, you know, it's gonna be the same formula. Uh, and the formula hasn't gotten old, but I am, you know, questioning it. Uh, I know Michael, uh, Michael was the one that first introduced the whole like, you know, is it losing its charm the more we see of it? Um, and I didn't think that when I first read the volume of Code Black, but after reading this volume and seeing, you know, kind of the ending of it, I am starting to question that myself. So uh, at this point, it's still worth it. I think it's still, if you really love, you know, the anime or you liked the original series, this is one that you should pick up and at least read these first two volumes. But uh, it is one that I'm going to be more cautious about or maybe looking at a little bit more uh, when we, you know, dissect it for the third volume or looking, you know, beyond that as well. Um, but anyway, that's basically the end of my review. Uh, I'm going to just talk about the spoiler thing if you want me to talk about it. Uh, so three, two, one. Okay. So the ending uh, has it to where it kind of insinuates the body is going to turn over a new leaf uh, because the cardiac arrest did kill the body. Um, and you know, some outside forces, I'm assuming the guy got to like a hospital or something, you know, or somebody, uh, some pedestrian came down and was like, given CPR. I think maybe it said that like he got the paddle. So probably like emergency responders, but, uh, you know, because when somebody, you know, I would say everybody that's got a near death, uh, experience does really reconsider their life. So, um, it will be interesting to see if, uh, they kind of turn over New Leaf completely. Um, not to say in this series that a momentary uh, relief or, you know, all things are going well wouldn't be bad. I think that is maybe something that you could throw in there that would, you know, provide a good development opportunity for the cells and the characters that are personifications that you're having in the story. Um, but I don't know, because like, uh, it, you know, it'll be interesting how they play on it because they don't really touch on the outside or like the person that owns the body. Um, so that's kind of where it is. You know, I think of shows like Osmosis Jones and, you know, that was one thing that I think I like a little bit more than in this is because it does have like touching on like who owns the body. Uh, but, you know, that leaves more development for in this series because you don't have, you know, that aspect that you're having to shed light on. But um, 
So yeah, I'm just curious if they're going to have it to where the body is like, all right, you know, I'm gonna go clean, I'm gonna start living my life right. Well, if that's the case, this doesn't really make it a code black, so it defeats the whole purpose of the spinoff. You could just have it in the main series, right? Or it's like a one-off arc or whatever. Um, so that's where I'm really, you know, getting it, uh, getting at. Um, obviously, there's people that do, you know, have bad habits and, you know, they have a near-death experience and, you know, they do have like a month or, you know, a section of time in their life where they're doing good and then, you know, they relapse. So um, I'm just curious to see, you know, exactly what direction it is. They could go both, but it's just one of those things, again, like I iterated that, you know, it'll really determine how much the series gets stale if they play that wrong. So I think the next volume will be a big uh, determining factor on just how the rest of the series will look. Uh, but anyway, guys, I'm gonna stop there so this can be a short video. So let me know what you thought of this volume if you got a chance to read it. If you haven't yet, I still say it's worth going to give it a read. Um, it's it's still pretty funny and you know, if you like some back and forth of darker moments and lighthearted moments, this is still one in there that achieves that. Uh, so anyway, guys, I'll talk to you later. Go check out our other stuff. We have the first volume review and then we got a couple other uh, volume reviews coming out shortly. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And as always, peace addicts.